G'day, my name's Matt, but you'll know me as WFX Malice. Today I'm going to be doing a Fusion 360 tutorial showing you how to use offset planes. Let's get started. Back when I first started Twitch streaming, I purchased this little 720 webcam. Served its purpose back then, but useless by today's standards. So I come up with a bit of an idea of repurposing it as my paddle cam on my sim rig. That way I can show off my fancy heel toe footwork while downshift rev matching. It comes with a few challenges. I want to mount it as far over to the right hand side as I can, but then it needs to angle in. As well as angling in, it also needs to angle down. Now the webcam does have a few degrees of tilting on there, but nowhere near enough. So I've got two different angles I need to work with. I need to make a base plate for this to mount to the sim rig, and I need to make a mounting that will slide in between that clamp. So let's jump over to Fusion 360 and see how I've done this using offset planes. All right, let's make the camera mounting side of the structure. So we'll create a sketch, top pane, and right there. Let's create a rectangle. We'll lock that in so it's constrained 6 mil by 30. And let's go ahead and zoom in. Let's create a circle, 6 mil, and another circle, 6 mil. And let's go ahead and make these tangent. Done. Now we can go and trim off what we don't need here. Make this nice and neat. I know this isn't constrained correctly, but that is fine for what I require here. And let's go ahead and extrude that. Let's make a 45 mil. Zoom that back a little. We're going to go ahead and create a sketch on this pane right here. We don't need to create an offset pane for this one here, just clicking on that surface will do that. Um, We'll create a line up. The length of that is irrelevant right now because it will get locked in by this. Now we're going to make this, we want this 55 degrees from here. However, you notice that it's drawing the degrees from up here. So we're working in a 90 degree segment. So we'll just reverse engineer that and we'll go 35 degrees. And we'll bring this down level to there and we will create one more line back to snap it. Now, this here isn't long enough, and this is why we didn't put any uh, dimensions on the length of this line. So we're just gonna grab this point and drag it out to there. Now that's gonna cover the rounded section, not just the square section here. We'll go ahead and finish that sketch. You see what I mean? It's overhanging, but it's gonna work for here, and that's gonna work great for our next section. We're going to extrude cut. And minus, 30 mil. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Not quite. Uh, let's select that section as well. There we go. Now, this is where the offset pane comes in because we want to create a sketch on here. However, if we click on there, it plays up sometimes. It thinks we want to create on this plane here. So we're just going to right click, offset plane. right there and let's create a sketch on there. Now this is where things get a little bit confusing. So we'll create a construction line out from the center. We're just gonna bring this up here. That is fine right there. And then from here, I'm going to create a 135 degree 40 mil. And look at that. I've made that a construction line. Get rid of that. Let's create another line. And make that 40. And hundred and thirty-five. Doing some weird things there. It's Normally it would take the geometry from this one here, but that's fine. 135, it works for me. 
create another line. <laughs> okay, it's done 45 degrees to the center line. You always got to watch your angles here. Now, before we go too far, this here is now constrained to that line. So let's get rid of that line and let's get rid of its constraint. Because we want to be able to shift this whole, whole thing around. All right, like I said, it gets a little bit confusing there because I see it. Construction line straight up there. That's why it was taking the measurements from that. All right, we want to be able to move this square around. So if we left it constrained to that construction line, it wouldn't have allowed. So I could go and put measurements here and make this lock in exactly, but I'm not going to. I'm going to be lazy here and just freehand it to go yep that's a nice little gap either side there shift it up a tiny done now i'm gonna finish this sketch there and just rotate this around and have a look right i need to create an extra section on here so we're going to go back and edit that sketch before we go too far so that's this one here we're just going to create some lines that are directly perpendicular or collinear, should I say? So that's going to be 40, and let's tab and type in 90. And one more line just to close this off. Done. This will make sense in a minute. Let's go and extrude that down formula. And to turn back on sketches because. I don't know if you noticed, but it just made that sketch disappear on us. Select that sketch and we're going to do an extrude cut. You see that there? Now I've made this edge here level with there. So before it was overhanging slightly. So if I needed to put this mount right up tight in the corner, it would have been blocked by this angle here. So we would have lost a few mil to be able to move that up. And lastly, Let's create a mounting hole. And I'm really just gonna put this hole a little bit random. I want it to be slightly higher than that center and I'm pretty happy with where it's actually put it. Let's put a taper on it. Let's make the head of the screw to be 6.5 and three mil, good. Happy with that. And that's pretty much it. So this here is our base plate. That's going to sit flat on our print bed when we print. That there is 55 degree angle from there. Now most 3D printers on standard quality will stack out to 45 degrees. So it will actually go a lot sharper. Uh, it will defy gravity slightly. So 55 degrees is safe. You could even print that on fine quality. I think most of them are about 55, 54 or 56 degrees. You can preset that in your slicer. Uh, just to make sure that it does step out correctly. Um, all right, let's jump over to the 3D printer and see how that looks. Conclusion time. My first prototype came out really well, considering I had to guess a lot of the angles and dimensions. The major change we made was I increased the pitch from the base plate to the camera mount from 45 degrees to 55 degrees. This angled the camera around so I could see all three pedals and not just the clutch pedal. It also helped me overcome another problem that I hadn't noticed at this point, and that's this top section here. It protrudes far beyond this flat surface. So when I needed to mount this base plate hard up against the top of the sim rig, I was restricted there. So changes we made. I moved 
the camera mount as far over to this corner as I could. That brought it away from that top surface. We added a chamfer onto that top corner. This is really hard doing this on camera. That chamfer up there and standing it up to 55 degrees. And that allowed a flat mount, get that right up nice and tight in the top corner. So to sim racers, I wanna know, do you run a pedal cam? Is it worth running a pedal cam? How did you mount your pedal cam? Was it just a piece of metal that you've bent into place or did you have a better pivot on your camera? Or did you print something up like this? Um, hopefully you guys have learned something from this. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Hopefully I've inspired you to get onto Fusion 360 and build something of your own. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Like if you liked it. Throw some comments down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.